Don't you wish Clay Walsh from Old Fashioned not only gave his thoughts on relationships, but on women's health issues as well? <laughs> if that's truly what you wish, then you should be put on some kind of watch list. Finally, I thought the old bag would never kick off. See, Clay Walsh is a terrible doctor. She wasn't even dead in that scene. Who needs women and medical experts to talk about those issues when you have this guy, writer-director Pat Necarado, who has given us the anti-Planned Parenthood movie Voiceless, clearly named as such because no one will take Pat seriously in a topic he knows nothing about. Going into this review, this seems like something creepy Walt would have an opinion on, but, uh, something tells me he's gonna be in jail for a little while. Voiceless is the story of Jesse, a war veteran who comes home to tell women exactly what they should be doing with their bodies. And with such heavy topics as abortion, who knows how wacky these opening credits will be. Great impression of the Windy City opening credits. I'm so used to movies like Old Fashioned looking like the physical representation of I grabbed this off the shelf at a Hallmark store. Voiceless, on the other hand. Hey, yo! You can't park there, that's my spot. Sorry about that. Do you even have a car? It doesn't matter, it's my spot. It's shot like an episode of The Wire. <laughs> Why? Rusty Joyner plays Jesse McTooGood of an actor for this film, who comes home to Philadelphia, where it's most certainly not always sunny, and he's inspired to help out at his local church. And I pray that next year at this time, we have many more in our congregation. Especially after our drummer died in a terrible utility room explosion. The church is led by Reverend James Russo, who has been in hiding ever since faking his death in Detroit. Here's how you distract Jesse from stalking abortion clinics. Hide his keys in the junk room. It'll take him years to find it. Jesse is named the new community outreach leader, which is sort of like naming Richard Spencer head of the NAACP. They're paying very close attention to Jesse's speech, largely because most of them think that he's Brad Pitt. This is spliced in with Jesse removing dead hookers that he's scalped. Normally in this kind of review, I'll add creepy music to a scene, which fits the unintentioned tone of the movie. This film, however, supplies its own creepy music. So, he's gonna skin that girl alive, right? As he throws a dead body rolled up in a carpet into his truck, he notices something else a little troubling. That looks like a whole lot of none of your damn business! And again, look at how it's shot! At this point, it'd be unrealistic if he doesn't go on a shooting spree by the end of it. Why is this movie shot like it's Creed? The only people who this would inspire should be or are in jail. Don't worry, though. There is comic relief. You must be, uh, Mr. Adorable. Oh, we got us a joker here. We got some kind of funny boy here. Huh? Do I look adorable to you? Thank God Paul Rodriguez is here. I was just thinking that this movie needed shtick. <laughs> what would this anti-women's health film be without a healthy dose of some Joshin? This is one soup kitchen that serves bread and laugh tracks. I serve 300 people two meals a day. You want to see somebody go crazy nuts? You just run out of bread. <laughs> then what? Then you hide and you get my bread. <laughs> that is surely going to be a bigger laugh riot than young Sheldon is going to be. Jesse is the perfect hero, though. Look how great he is with kids. Here, take this. But you gotta keep it a secret, okay? You don't have to do that. No, I insist. Mmm, he does charity and is good with kids, just like Gacy. 
This movie can't go five minutes without him staring at the women's clinic and picturing semi-automatic weapons in his head. We've reached a point where I think I need to replace the soundtrack with non-creepy music. That's a first for one of these reviews! Okay, okay, that just raises more questions. Jesse kills some time by talking about his marriage. Oh, right, I forgot he's married. We picked up right where we left off. It's like I never left. He still has an average of burying ten dead hookers in his backyard a day. Ah, truly the most persecuted in our society. We must all come together and speak out against violence towards doom and gloom street corner preachers. This seems like the kind of person who would inspire Jesse's actions for the rest of the film. On the plus side, he's made a new best friend. They're on their way to find the nearest script for a buddy cop film. As Jesse sits down to cosplay for the local screening of Romper Stomper, people are noticing the good work that he's doing. What do you think about me spicing the place up a little? What do you have in mind? I was thinking more like a real boxing gym. Again, this movie is no creed. I don't need to see a movie about the son of Tommy Gunn. People finally show up for their community outreach program. Next step, find out if they can dance. Then this will truly be the electric boogaloo the church intended. It's nice to see him bring the community together before he tears it apart by the end of the film. No one give him a gun, ever! He's then given money by Reverend Mafia and is told to use the money wisely, which he immediately spends on a fast motion establishing shot. If you thought the movie was unsubtle so far, you're about to be hit in the face with a brick made of dead fetuses. Can I ask you a question? Sure. <laughs> Will I see my baby in heaven? That depends. Are you gonna give birth to baby Hitler? Well, that is a complicated question. So complicated that we're not actually gonna let you hear the rest of that conversation. Finally, a movie made for people who consider Jesse Waters to be a journalist. What are the odds? It's stupid! Wait, is that why the lead character's name is Jesse? You'd be taken more seriously if you named your character Father Guido Sarducci. Even when asked about how things are going at the community center, he can't help but get his bloodlust boiling. Is someone addressing the situation? I'm in the process of filing a complaint. Well, has anything come of it yet? What's with all these women needing pap tests and breast exams? I mean, what the hell? The next obvious step, harass the employees. Ma'am. Listen, sir, I she can't discuss- She didn't seem in the right frame of mind to make that sort of a decision. I, I gotta go. You don't seem in the right frame of mind to be out in the public. Come on, bro, talk it out. You know the old saying, what's a community outreach without lying to them? They do offer some good services. And they also have about five to 20 abortions a day. Oh, really? Is that anything like that stat you just aborted from your ass? Jesse knows everything about every person who visits that clinic, and also every reason why they're going there in the first place, all by simply staring at it through his window, talking to one person, and harassing an employee. Time to file a complaint? What? No, no, I meant the clinic should file a complaint against Jesse! I'm not really sure how to explain What kind it. of business? It's an abortion clinic. An abortion clinic? You know, you could at least file the complaint without lying. He runs into Doom and Gloom Preacher, who points Jesse in the right direction about where to pick up an illegal weapon to storm the clinic. Some of you may recognize Rusty Joyner as the love interest from Last Ounce of Courage, and while you may think that makes sense, it actually makes way more sense knowing that he also played the rapist slash serial killer in the exploitation film Unsullied. And that character was more appealing than his character in this film. In other words, don't go to this guy for health advice. Don't go through with this. Mm-mm. Let's go. There are other choices you can make. So, 
You're pro-choice now? I guess he has to speak up. I mean, what's he gonna do? Just hand out pamphlets? Don't get discouraged. It's a good thing you're doing. Stop encouraging him! You know, I could talk more about the subplot involving the Scottish neighbor. We've become more like a lamp tucked under a basket rather than a light on top of a hill. Yes, ma'am. Except I don't care. I wonder how that crying pregnant girl from earlier is doing. This is all just a big setup for the hit Netflix series, One Reason Why. After creepily staring at the clinic some more, he decides to actually go to the kid's funeral. I see this going well. I was just trying to help her. She came to the church. What did you say to her? Nothing. I was, I was just trying to help her. Mom. Get him out of here. I'm, I'm, ter I'm terribly sorry. Get out. Ma'am, I'm so sorry. Look, he didn't say he'd lead positive community outreach. On the plus side, she is very clearly just taking a nap. I guess it's all been leading up to this, storming the clinic in person. <laughs> if you told me this was secretly a pro-choice film, I would believe you! I mean, after all, he looks so stable! Did they tell you that you could wind up like this girl? Hmm? Did they tell you that? Look at this picture. Hey, bro flake. They might actually be there for treatment of an STI. Granted, this movie is made by someone who doesn't know where the clitoris is, so why would I expect them to know anything else about women? Employees at Planned Parenthood and other reproductive clinics often go to work fearing for their lives and in some cases have actually been murdered. Good thing a movie like Voiceless is here to help with that. Sure enough, the only two cops in the city are called. Let me guess, you, uh, you were defending yourself. I went to talk to the manager. They got physical, not me. Sure, that's what you did. Did they tell you that you could wind up like this girl? Yeah, you just went in to talk to the manager. Jesse, you're embarrassing your wife, who again, I forgot was part of the movie. When were you gonna tell me about this? Like you would have understood. Step aside, sweetie. Women's health is a man's issue. Just like Jesse knows everything he needs to know about the girl who killed herself. They knew she wasn't sure. They made her go through with it anyway. You weren't there. This is a headache for Reverend Russo, who does not want the police coming to his church, especially since he gave up a life of crime years ago when Brad Hamilton threw coffee in his face. Jesse is saddened because the mean old reverend doesn't want his church to become radicalized. That son of a bitch! More people, however, are coming to see Doctor Not a Doctor. This is a good opportunity to let the pregnant lady actually say something in the scene. We didn't know where else to go, so I brought her here for whatever she wants. I don't feel right about having this abortion. I want to stop this baby. But let's not do that. Men are talking here. See? He knows the facts. A woman has already died, and now we have an 18-year-old pregnant girl who's got no place to stay. And on top of it all, they're murdering babies right under our nose. I mean, not literally under his nose, but that's what Bill O'Reilly told him to think. Duh! When Jesse starts flashing back to the war, I expect Richard Crenna to show up to tell someone that they'll need a fresh set of body bags because he's gonna murder a doctor. Don't believe me? Look at this next shot. Again, this is a stealth pro-choice movie, right? That's the only thing that makes sense! Look at this! Seriously? I'm not pregnant. I'm going in for a checkup. Not everybody is having an abortion here, alright? Get a life. See? At this point, the movie begins critiquing itself. Like how everyone begins reacting to Jesse like he's the unstable ticking time bomb that he is. One shot has him praying with a couple of people, and the girl has a look of, okay, maybe if we just pray with him, he'll leave us alone. 
The only two cops in the city are keeping a tight watch over him. We're now introduced to the villain of the third act, an abusive husband forcing his wife to get an abortion. And again, the girl has zero lines. Voiceless! Anyway, that's followed by another scene of a pregnant girl having another set of zero lines. Double voiceless! Will only cops in the city do something about this? Has he always been the activist type? He's not an activist. He does community outreach. In between harassing employees and patients, sure. Has he done anything else out of character? Hmm. Other than building those explosive devices at our house, there's really been nothing. Yeah, that joke doesn't work when there's an extreme possibility that that's the case. Turns out the reasoning behind all of this is because years ago, they themselves got an abortion. Makes sense. They're trying to take away someone else's choice simply because they regret their own. The guys at the outreach center look very surprised that a woman has infiltrated their boys club. I know what goes on in the steam rooms. What? I can make up shit too. This woman's problem is that she's clearly being beaten by her husband. I'm sorry, Mr. Carlson, but she didn't come in for her appointment. You, you check again, huh? Yeah, I've checked. Alexis Carlson. I don't see her name here, sir. <laughs> now you, you look again. I know you people ordered a Brian Cox, but I'm the best you got! Everyone knows that abortions are always performed on women who are dragged in kicking and screaming by their abusive husbands, especially when they have a gun. Oh! How ironic is it that the villain of the movie is trying to take away a woman's right to choose? No, you killed not Brian Cox. He had his not Manhunter audition in an hour. In the biggest fuck you in the movie's unsubtlety, it shows a reflection of the clinic in a puddle of blood. Yeah. Because it was the clinic that made the husband abusive. We all know how much women's health clinics support domestic abuse. Maybe you should angle this shot to where Jesse is reflected. Seems a little more accurate. Now Jesse and the clinic's manager can talk face to face. I'm sure they'll have a very intellectual conversation. What I wanted was to provide a safe place for women to get the care that they deserve to get abortions. <laughs> Safety, screw that. Jesse won't be satisfied until back alley abortions become a thing again. Jesse is ordered to stay 30 feet away from the clinic, so it's a happy ending, I guess. Jesse is truly a hero to all the children out there. I saw you on the news. Mom said they're saving babies. That's you, that's the baby. More movies need to have children who look up to people who make life miserable for women who need health care. Finally, the movie actually lets a woman talk about this very serious issue. When that clinic reopens, I'll be standing by my husband, but I'll be saying another prayer too. Thanking God for using my husband to open my eyes. She then quotes the lyrics to Stand By Your Man, and she follows her speech by saying, Once you're out of the womb, it's fuck you, you're on your own. Remember the beginning of the film when both the church and the clinic lived across from each other seemingly in peace? Good thing Jesse was here to provide the community outreach it needed. Anger and hostility and making a difficult time for women even more difficult as they now have to fear for their own safety. Aren't you going to do something? He's at proper distance, and they're perfectly within their rights. What this half of Only Cops in the City means by this is fuck all you women. I would say that this movie should be ashamed of itself if it even knew of the word shame. And now the ending credits are finally here. Executive produced by a dude, written and directed by another dude, and produced by those same two dudes. Little does this movie know that getting fucked by a rusty joiner is exactly why we need protection. Voiceless is the kind of movie you'd get if Martin Scorsese and Paul Schrader made Taxi Driver seemingly unaware of Travis Bickle's mental illness. It's reminiscent of a movie like Bill Lustig's Maniac, only if Frank Zito was supposed to be the moral center of the film. 
I'd ask who this movie is for, but I'm terrified to know the answer. At least the target audience for Old Fashioned is too scared of women to go out and harm them. This movie might as well say, Hey, here's a gun and a box of bullets. Do with them what you will. And even this film isn't nearly as disgusting as something like The Life Zone. But I'm sure we could work out a compromise. For every abortion that director Pat Nicarado stops, he then has to take care of and financially provide for that child until they become an adult. I'm sure then Pat would start singing a different tune. Wow, looking good, y'all. Sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash stoned gremlin productions. Follow us on Twitter at the Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.